What's up kids, Mr. Murray here back on Mr. Murray's Mathland and uh, we're continuing to look at uh, graphs and determine uh, their concavity and if they have any inflection points, points of inflection and that would be where the concavity changes. Uh, so if you're this far actually spending your time watching videos on this kind of stuff you probably have a basic idea of concavity and that has to do with the second derivative um, and points of inflection being where the concavity changes is going to be where f double prime changes signs or in this case it'll be g double prime um, so where we want to start is similar to when we find relative extrema uh, and use the first derivative test we're going to do basically the same process with the second derivative find where the second derivative is zero or undefined and then set up a number line and test to see if a second derivative changes signs before and after that point. If it changes, it's a point of inflection. So a lot of times people make that mistake of not actually testing if the sign changes. They just, oh, the second derivative is zero, it's an inflection point. Not necessarily, just a potential inflection point or as a pip, as I will call it oftentimes. So let's go, let's get right into the uh, second derivative here, our first derivative, we're looking at a trig function here uh, over the interval 0 to 2 pi. Uh, so our first derivative, the derivative of cosine, is negative sine of x over 2, but we've got to use a little chain rule there because the derivative of that inside is 1 half, so that's going to be you know, a pretty simple chain rule, but it's uh, still something that easy to overlook if you're not careful. Um, so that would be negative one-half sine of x over 2. And then the rest of the function, the derivative of negative x, is negative 1. Our second derivative, that chain rule is going to be uh, present again. The derivative of negative sine is negative cosine. So I'll just leave that coefficient alone if you can see where this is going because it's negative cosine of that x over 2 and then multiplied by that derivative. So the derivative of 1 half, you know, of 1 half again being multiplied to the coefficient that's already there will make 1 fourth. And then uh, the minus 1 on the end drops out, the derivative of a constant is 0. So there's your second derivative, negative 1 fourth cosine of x over 2 and so where is this second derivative zero or undefined? Well, it's cosine. So hopefully you're thinking, where is it undefined? It's never undefined. Sine and cosine are, are always defined. So we don't have to worry about the uh, undefined piece in this problem. But where is this equal to zero? That's certainly going to have some solutions. Whether or not they occur in this interval, that's a different story. So setting this uh, function equal to zero, uh, the coefficient of negative one-fourth, you can divide by that, and that goes away. So you're really focusing on where does cosine of x over 2 equals 0. And uh, remember, if you have these, these kind of trig functions where there's, I call a multiple angle, multi-angle problem, where the inside is not just x, you, you got to deal with the cosine part of it first. So ask yourself, where does cosine equal 0 before you can solve for x? Um, where does cosine equal zero on the unit circle? That would be at pi over two and three pi over two, at least, you know, between zero and two pi. But now what you have just found is that's what the inside would need to be. The cosine of x over two would need to work out to be pi over two or three pi over two. And uh, so now to solve that, we're going to multiply those solutions by two to solve for x. And so that's going to give us solutions of 2 times pi over 2 will give us pi. And 2 times 3 pi over 2 will give us 3 pi. And let's not forget that this does have an infinite number of solutions. You know, normally it would be, you know, plus 2 pi n. You know, that's that cyclical uh, period of sine and cosine or the unit circle, one revolution being 2 pi. And that would have to get multiplied by 2 as well meaning uh, the new period would be plus 4 pi. So the other solutions would be, you know, 1 pi plus 4 pi, 5 pi, 3 pi plus 4 pi, 7 pi. 
etc., etc. But we only want the solutions between 0 and 2 pi for this problem, uh, as, as indicated by the original problem. So we can ignore those, and we, we throw out that 3 pi as well. So our only solution is pi that we're going to investigate. And let's just see, that's a potential inflection point. So let's make some sort of sign chart, number line, and pi is the value we care about. You know, if you want to label this, this is g double prime, where we're plugging into the second derivative, and we're using it to determine g's uh, concavity. So if you plug in uh, anything less than pi into the second derivative, so whatever makes that easier for you, you know, you could plug in zero, for example. You know, if, you, if that's easy, if you plug in zero, you'll get cosine of zero, and that's positive one times negative one fourth. You're going to get any a negative. If you didn't feel comfortable plugging zero in for whatever reason, you could plug in, you know, pi over six, uh, pi over three. Pi over three would be a good one because when you do pi over three divided by two, you get pi over six, and Hopefully you feel comfortable saying, look, I'm going to get a positive value from this because that's quadrant one. Cosine is positive, but times that negative is always going to give you a negative coefficient. So that tells you your original function g is concave down. Or if you want to try to picture it, it's like a, a frown, right? Or a piece of a downward parabola looking kind of a shape. Anything bigger than pi, uh, but again, only up to 2 pi, so just be careful if you test well, actually, only things up to 3 pi. That's the next sort of critical number in this. Uh, if you plug in 2 pi, 2 pi could be a value you plug in. Plug in 2 pi into the second derivative. 2 pi over 2, you get pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1 times negative. It's going to give you a positive. So my second derivative did change signs, which means my original did change from concave down to concave up. Right? And that means this is a uh, point of inflection. Okay, so it said ask for the, the coordinates of the inflection point. So we got to go back to the original, get that uh, y coordinate. So I'm going to do g of pi. I'm plugging back into the original, and that would be cosine of pi over 2 minus pi. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so 0 minus pi is negative pi. So now I've really got everything I want to answer this question. So we have uh, an inflection point at pi negative pi, and we have that in this interval it's concave, the function is concave down, g, I, should, I guess I should be specific, is concave down from 0 to pi, and g is concave up from pi to 2 pi. And I was setting those boundaries because that's the interval it, it specified, so I don't want to describe beyond those boundaries. I didn't really explore beyond those. So there we go. Uh, very similar to your relative max and min kind of strategy, just applying the second derivative and watch out for your chain rule and your trig rules and all that good stuff. And if you want to confirm, you know I'm a big fan of that graphically, with your graphing calculator or Desmos here. And see, here is the function set up with a window of 0 to roughly 2.5 pi. And you, you might be able to see from this, there's a sh the subtle shift in concavity right around there at pi. Uh, but it might be even hard to see there. So you could even, you know, kind of uh, zoom out if you like. And maybe you can see even, look look at that, that change in concavity right around pi from concave down to concave up, kind of a subtle shift there. And if you zoom out, you kind of see that you get this kind of a squiggly, slanted uh, sinusoidal shape and uh, where it just keeps switching concavity. So kind of cool there, and uh, hopefully you feel even more convinced by your... Uh, your algebraic results now. So keep working hard, kids. Let me know if you got any questions.